Um, so, like, when I first got into my psychosis, um, I could remember vividly, like, what happened in the very beginning because those were the most shocking new experiences that I had. And, um, and what happened was, um, after I got to the hospital in Oakland, um, my mom, Mark, and my sister came up and basically got me out of the hospital and took me down to an ER in San Clemente. And they took me to Laguna that had a behavioral center. So I was there for a while. And then once I started getting to a point where I was able to go home and I wasn't at risk, um, I started um, going to outpatient program. And when I was released from the hospital, it was it, it was almost as if like the most worst experience that I'll ever go through in my life was was just the precursor to the most amazing experience in my life, which was leaving the hospital. I remember I drove with my sister and it was springtime and I'm looking out the window and we're driving down PCH to our house and I'm not in a hospital anymore and I look outside and all these flowers are blooming and there are all these colors. I'm not seeing the same gray bed that I was sleeping in. I'm not seeing all these sad people. I'm um, I'm free, you know, it, it was the most liberating feeling that I, I've ever had, which was kind of like the moment where I knew like everything would be okay. And I got out of it. I mean, the biggest, the biggest fear that I think anyone probably has when they're in a psychosis is, am I going to be like this for the rest of my life? Am I ever going to live a normal life again? And I, at that moment, driving home, I realized that I was a, able to live a normal life and actually have my life back. And that was just so amazing because like when people have near death experiences, they really, they really take a look at their lives and kind of, um, evaluate, you know, what they appreciate and, and what they're thankful for and they want to do better usually. And, um, and I'd say that mine was so much similar to that because I almost lost everything I knew about my life because I could have been institutionalized. Um, so from that moment on, um, that's when warm got back together. So I started writing a song. Um, I, I actually, I finished a song that I started writing while I was in Oakland and it's called Crabgrass. I didn't have any lyrics for it at first. Um, it was just something I was jamming in my room at the time up in Oakland. But once I got back home and I was an outpatient, going to outpatient program and coming home, I would write songs for Warm because I was so excited to just get out there and, and do something, write music. So I'm writing the lyrics and basically crabgrass has always been something that I've, I've liked visually. Um, I like that it's, it's a weed, but at the same time, I think it's, it's pretty. Growing up, um, like in all these like Spanish homes, all the lawns are made basically of crabgrass. So like it goes back to a childhood memory. And the interesting about interesting thing about crabgrass is that um, it grows out from a point, but at each branch, it'll create a new root and kind of spread that way. And so I kind of made that a metaphor for how I was um, living before my psychosis because I was going to school. I was working full time, um, smoking as much weed as I could and, um, kind of just pushing the boundaries. So 
the hook in that song is I'm just like crabgrass um, spreading too far until I get pulled. So it's all about that and kind of like um, um, basically just holding on to friends and people and doing things for people who don't reciprocate back or um, kind of just spreading yourself so thin that you end up popping or having an episode or whatever it is, nervous breakdown. Um, so that's what that song was about. And um, the first like practice that we had, I showed him that song. And I wasn't the singer, but I started singing it. So that was the one song in Warm that I started singing. And I would go home and I'd write more songs. I'd write lyrics. I'd write more songs and lyrics and more songs and lyrics. And um, we started playing shows. We, um, At that point, it was kind of like um, I was really pushing the band to do more. And that was my only outlet because um, the life that I kind of left behind in San Clemente was not a very good one because the certain people that I was hanging out with would do drugs and kind of like lead me down um, you know, that path again. So I wouldn't really hang out with anyone. I kind of stuck around with my family and I'd write these songs for Warm. And um, so and then Jack actually uh, moved back to LA. He, he started renting out a room and so we couldn't practice Warm anymore. So I mean, Will and I would still practice the songs. I mean, I'd come up with a new song like all the time and we'd jam it. So it was, it was always just Will and I, you know, hanging tough. And it got to the point where we kind of just started saying like, all right, it's done. Um, we're gonna move on and start doing other things. And that's when, um, at, at that time, when I was still just jamming with Will, um, I was kind of over the phase of, um, wow, life is so beautiful. Look at all these opportunities. I was at this point where I was so doped up on all the medications, just feeling so gray and, and dull to the point where I couldn't, I couldn't get excited or happy or feel sad or kind of like have any emotional reaction to something that was natural. And um, so I was in kind of like this state where um, I was kind of just not as passionate as I was. And a few experiences led me, led me back into kind of like accepting what I have and and um, my diagnosis and basically dealing with it in a healthy way. And a few other thing, positive things came into my life. Um, I started doing better and I, um, I started writing music that was like the music that I would listen to when I first got home from the hospital, which were bands like Duster, Smashing Pumpkins, um, Starflyer 59, um, all these bands were bands that I would listen to when I started kind of like freaking out and kind of slipping from reality and um, overwhelming myself about certain things. And I would just get in my bed and listen to these songs and um, it, w it would calm me down to the point where I was able to um, just know that I was okay. And so I started writing music that was influenced by that. And the first song that I wrote for Red Curtain was Strapped to Steel. And that was the first time I ever really wrote something about my psychosis. And when I, I was writing the melodies and the guitar parts, um, it was really interesting because for the first time I was really um, laying out kind of what happened and how I perceived it. And the feeling from it was so incredible. Like the first time 
Will and I jam the song and I'm seeing lyrics about being in an ambulance, going to a hospital in the middle of a psychosis. Um, I knew that's what I wanted to do and I knew that's the direction I needed to take. And um, not only did I feel like it was something for me, I felt like if there was ever someone else who ever went through something like I did, they could look back and listen to my music and get that same comfort knowing that someone else has gone through it and relate to it and know that they'll be okay.